Hi, welcome to my Leadership Loft. This is Leadership Questions Answered. My name is Stephen. On this channel, I answer questions from my thousands of online leadership and management students, as well as common queries I get from people that attend my programs in person. Today, I'm gonna to be looking at a question that I get all the time. How can I deal with difficult people? Of course, this statement is the result of a judgment about how you feel about your interactions with that person. So, first of all, it might be worth understanding what you actually mean when you say that. Do you find their behaviour difficult? Are they difficult because they don't follow instruction? Do we struggle to understand them and so feel awkward around them? So, it would be really good to understand why you've made this judgment about them. But, for the sake of this video, I'm going to imagine a situation where you think they're difficult because they always seem to rebel against instruction and are particularly negative when you try to implement new ways of doing things. Of course, all situations have nuance. So this video cannot tell you what to do in a specific situation. It's just something to think about and you have to make your own judgment. So, for people who tend to behave in a negative way when you ask them to do something, or when you're introducing new ways of doing something, it could be that you and they are living in different realities. That probably sounds a bit odd. Surely there's only one reality? Well, yes and no. As we exist, move about and observe the world, our senses are constantly giving us information. We observe people. We hear talk. We try to make sense of this data at different levels. Much of what we do is done at an unconscious level, including interpreting sounds as words through language and language as ideas and concepts. We also try to put what we're experiencing into context. And so we do this by forming a narrative or story about what's happening here. In this sense, we construct a social reality. This is why different people can have very different interpretations about a single event or situation. When we find that we're struggling with somebody, it could be that we both have very different stories about what's going on. This means the other person might react in a way that we didn't predict or we find confusing. Let me give you an example. Let's say, as a manager, you decide to embark upon a programme of process improvement. Maybe you employ some outside help or maybe you arrange for some training in business improvement tools and techniques. Your story, the way you interpret it, is that you or the business are investing to make things better. This will reduce wasteful practices and create greater job security for everybody by reducing costs. It will also give your team a chance to learn new skills. To you, this is an exciting time and you expect the team to be as enthusiastic as you are. However, the story someone in your team might construct could be that as a team, we're wasteful and failing. That unless we change things, someone might lose their job. Or it might suggest to them that consultants are looking for reductions in costs through making people redundant. If they need new skills, it might suggest to them that they currently lack the skills and so they feel unappreciated. There are many reasons why people make sense of the world in the way they do. Some of it is down to individual personality traits. Some people are naturally more pessimistic, and so they naturally see a black cloud hanging over everything. Or it might be that they've experienced cost-saving initiatives before, and those led to job losses. Don't forget, you know your motives. They can only guess or accept your story. Plus, there are likely to be things that you know that they don't. And you may have been planning this for some time. Maybe they have just been told that something is happening and they are having to construct a story quickly to know how to react. This is just one example of when your way of making sense of the world might differ from one or more of your teams. We might think that they're being irrational or unreasonable. But don't forget, they have different probably less information to go on. So, what can you do? Well, for one thing, giving people time to process what's happening is important. Of course, your interpretation of what is happening, your story, is important, so tell it. But don't rush them or insist they adopt your narrative straight away. 
It might take some time for them to process things. Engaging with people's concerns, in fact creating opportunities to listen is also important. And this isn't just a case of making a show that you're listening but going to carry on regardless. Maybe there are ways you can make changes based on their concerns. According to a psychological theory called self-determination theory, developed by Richard Ryan and Edward Desi, human beings have three basic psychological needs. A sense of autonomy, feelings of relatedness and a sense of competence. Some people replace the relatedness element with belonging, which enables you to call it the ABC of motivation, autonomy, belonging and competence. According to this theory, people are intrinsically motivated by these needs and will work to acquire them. They are good in themselves. I talk about these ideas in more detail in my online management development programmes. You can find out more by using the links below. For today though, I want to highlight the element here of a sense of autonomy. This can easily be undermined in the workplace because of the hierarchical structures that are common in organisations. This doesn't mean it's impossible to provide opportunity for a sense of autonomy, but it normally means you have to think about how to do it. A sense of autonomy doesn't mean a feeling that you can do whatever you want, whenever you want, but it means having a sense that you have some control over your life and your actions. In other words, that you have some choices. In the workplace, the drive to standardise and automate can mean a steady reduction in the team's sense of autonomy. A balance is required here. Sometimes precise procedures are vital to insist upon for all sorts of reasons, such as the safety of the staff and public, and legal obligations, to name just a few. But locking everything down too tightly can be demotivating. Going back then to our original question about dealing with difficult people, could it be that what you're interpreting as difficult, they are feeling as demotivated because they lack a sense of autonomy? Could it be that providing them with more opportunity to improve what they do themselves could help? When I'm working with teams to implement new ways of doing things, I try to involve the team as early as possible. That way I don't have to sell the idea because they already own it. Of course, People's behaviour can be a result of many different things. This is just one example. Okay, that's it. Thanks for listening. If you'd like to learn more about effective leadership and management, check out my online training courses through the links below. And don't forget to subscribe to this channel to get more free content. Bye for now.